is uh, Florian Thalhofer, uh, last but not least, speaker of the afternoon, Mr. Thalhofer. I had the pleasure that attend a uh, keynote speaking in IDOX in 2011, and it really, really impressed me. So Florian is a media artist and documentary maker and the owner of Corsaco Institute. He started in 1997 to tell stories via computer. He's the chief architect of the Corsaco software and the inventor of Corsaco system, a new way of structuring narrations, which are role-based, non-linear, and interactive. Talhofer made numerous Corsaco films and one linear film. He taught at different universities and he's coming direct from Germany. He wears two hats here because today he's uh, presenting here, but tomorrow he's defending in the interactive pitch his project uh, with, a, with a partner. So if someone is like a pioneer to me in interactive documentary, let's say in the world, it's this man, Florian Thalhofer. Thank you. I studied design at an art school uh, around about 20 years ago. And I was, um, I learned that I'm not interested in design. So um, I got interested in storytelling and in narration. And uh, no one at this art school in this design department could tell me how to properly uh, tell a story. But what we had there were a lot of computers. So I made use of the computers and I uh, tried to, like, I, I figured out, I thought about how would computers, what is the logic of a computer that would help storytelling? And I came up with a, with a system. Okay, so um, I would, before I would like to start, can we see that? Um, cool, I would like to talk about the project that I did with uh, the Korsakov uh, software. Um, recently, I will not talk too much about it, but I want you to see like one of these projects. It's very simple, actually. Um, and the topic was uh, money and the Greeks. So you make me really nervous here. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry. So uh, together with my wife, she's Greek. We traveled through Greece, and uh, we tried to find out well, what people, how people experience uh, the crisis in Greece. Unfortunately, that knowledge did not come uh, to Germany. Um, I have to apologize for German politics in this uh, area. Uh, I tried my best. Um, so we traveled around Greece and spoke with Greek citizens about how they experience. Well, meanwhile, I might tell you, like yesterday we were invited for dinner and uh, we had like these nice dishes filled with chocolate. And what happened was that I, I had like I had a bite in that because I thought like I should not uh, you know just swallow it because it was really nice and prestige and I bit on it and like the chocolate came out of it. I didn't know that there's chocolate inside and it spilled all over the table right to the director of the whole festival. By the way, thank you very much for inviting me here. So okay, and I was very impressed to see Brixton Acad uh, Academy. Um, uh, before I had a, a, like when I was 17 years old, I traveled, I come from a small place in the south of Germany and I traveled to London. I was there on my own. Okay, let's actually start again. Sorry. So this is a Korsakov film, it starts with an intro and then you have an option where you can choose what should be the next clip to see though. So I click that one option, which is right on the right side. Es gibt nicht zu wenig Geld, es gibt zu viel. 
Und weil die Besitzer von einem vielen überflüssigen Geld nicht wissen, wofür sie es ausgeben sollen, legen sie es an. Und sie legen es da an, wo es einerseits sicher ist und andererseits möglichst viel Rendite bringt. Damit das viele Geld nicht weniger wird und sogar noch mehr Geld produziert. Bis vor gar nicht langer Zeit kam das Geld nach Griechenland. Und das war eine gute Idee, denn da war das Geld sicher und die Rendite stimmte auch. Die Idee sprach sich herum und so geschah es, dass immer mehr überflüssiges Geld in Griechenland ankam. Die Leute haben sich von den vielen Geldsachen gekauft, die zwar schön waren, aber die sie eigentlich gar nicht wirklich brauchten. Dicke Autos zum Beispiel oder Einbauküchen. Bis das Geld gedacht hat, Moment, wenn die Leute hier so viel Quatsch kaufen und nichts, was sie wirklich brauchen, womit soll denn dann die schöne Rendite erwirtschaftet werden? Und dann kam das Geld auf einmal nicht mehr so gerne nach Griechenland, sondern lief woanders hin. Und weil Geld immer gern Geld hinterherläuft, lief auf einmal das ganze Geld aus Griechenland weg. Und viele, viele Leute in Griechenland hatten ganz plötzlich gar kein Geld mehr. Sie hatten zwar schöne Autos, aber kein Geld für Benzin. Und sie standen in ihren schicken Einbauküchen, doch der Kühlschrank war leer. Das Geld war schon wieder ganz woanders. So then, options come up where you can jump and I just click into one. And I actually started to stop it here because um, I would like, so I used Korsakov as an instrument to try to understand the world. And I had a couple of findings when it comes to uh, narration. And I would like to talk about this this afternoon. So I have divided my talk into uh, five chapters. And uh, first one is, what is Korsakov? So it started um, at the University of the Arts with a, a project called the Korsakov Syndrome. And actually, I wrote the software to make this uh, project in 2000. And I didn't think about that I'm developing actually a software. So that came uh, later. OK, I make a big jump from 2000 to 2008. Um, uh, I'm now developing it together with uh, Professor Matt Sor at Concordia University in Montreal, uh, who managed to uh, find uh, a little bit of government funding. That would then pay for David Riesch, who is our programmer. And this is our little team. This is what the software looks like. But OK, let's skip that. So uh, we have seen geld.gr. So we got a little bit of an impression how uh, a Korsakov film looks, and this is the pretty much tries to explain the back end of it. This is a snoop, the smallest narrative unit. Usually, a snoop is a video sequence. A snoop has pops. Pops are points of contact. There are in pox and out pox. Through an out pox, snoo connects to other snoos by connecting to another snoo's in pox. Many snoos can connect to a single pox, and every snoo can have many pox. Pox are created by keywords. An in keyword to create an in pox and an out keyword to create an outpop. A Corsica film is a collection of connected snoops. Now I'm really curious if my clicker works. I just got it. It doesn't work. BBC ruined my brand new clicker device. Okay, so Korsakov is a software for authors to create rule-based films. So basically Korsakov still very much believes in the concept of an author. It's not that the people out there are the authors, there is an author, it can also be a group of authors. And rule-based films means that the author doesn't create the links um, 
by, by drawing, connecting the, the bits and pieces in his narration, but by creating the rules how things come together. And this is interesting, I believe, because uh, this allows to create flexible films. So there are films that behave differently every time a viewer watches it. This is not a random experience, but it, uh, it has almost, yeah, it's, it behaves, films behaves. And, okay, I can skip this. So Corsicle films are rule-based, they are flexible, and they are usually interactive. So, Korsakov is a principle to structure narrations and uh, like I've been using it for so many years, uh, so different formats came out of, uh, of the software and of the system. So there's the Korsakov film that we have uh, seen already, uh, there's the Korsakov installation um, with multiple screens and there's the Korsakov live show. Uh, Judith uh, was so kind to mention that in her talk and described it a little bit. Um, and there is also a Korsakov presentation. This is not a Korsakov presentation because I know already what's coming next. Uh, this slide. <laughs> Korsakov is a philosophy. Korsakov is a philosophy just like uh, linear film. Linear film is also a philosophy. It, it, it's a, a tool that we use to make sense of the world. We might not be aware of it because it, it seems to be so normal. And after a long time of thinking, many years, I found, I, I came to the conclusion <laughs> that film and, and multilinear film encourages linear causal thinking. Linear causal thinking. So what is a linear film? I think everyone knows, so that's one scene comes out of the other. So basically, the author knows that. The author has full control over his material, and this is why the author has to get has to um, take over the responsibility. So he has to be, he's responsible for, for all the outcomes. What then is multilinear? So this brings me to chapter two of my talk. So there are two kinds of interactive narration. Multilinear is when the author pre-thinks the experience of the user. So the author at any time knows uh, what will happen next if the chooser decides this or that way? So I call this multilinear. And film and multi uh, multilinear film encourages linear causal thinking. Whereas Korsakov or rule based film encourage, encourages a different thing, and I would like to call that multi causal thinking. So there's a rule, multi causal thinking is basically. Uh, that um, something happens and it had not one uh, reason why that happened, but many. I think everyone knows that because uh, we live in this world and this world works very much like that. There are also linear things where one cause has one effect, but this is an exception actually. So there's a rule of thumbs when should I use as a filmmaker, use film and when should I use Korsakov or rule-based film? And I would say that uh, you should use film or multilinear film if you as the author, you know what you want to say and you want to convince your audience that your audience believes in what you think. And uh, if you want to raise awareness, for example, go linear, go linear or multilinear. Korsakov is different, so Korsakov is great for an author if the author wants to find out about something, he wants to gain understanding, and he wants to document what is there at the moment for, for the future. Because we all know that in the future, people will have brains that, are, um, that come together in a different time. So people in the future will make a different sense of, out of what they see. And I want to keep it open for them to interpret what they see with their brains. Chapter three, exploring normality. What was that? Mm. Ah, people, um, people always say, ah, okay, Korsakov is not linear, so it's random. But uh, no, actually, 
uh, randomness and order are two extremes on a, um, on a line. And um, Korsakov is, is much more in the middle of it. So there is a little bit of randomness to it, so to speak, but it's all rule-based, but there is not a perfect order. Again, you could use Korsakov as a tool for creating everything. You can create completely random films, and you can com create films that have a complete linear order. But why would you use Korsakov for that? Um, these points, okay, like this is, okay, it's a different, I, I want to express a different thought with this. So the points on the, on the lines are extremes. And it turns out, I, 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 like I observed, that linear film is very good to describe extremes. The greatest, the biggest fish in the world, the cutest lion, uh, the most terrible, yeah, well, this makes a good film. And Korsakov is very much interested in normality. And people always think that that's boring. I disagree. Actually, I think that's really interesting. And there's a reason for that. Because in this space, in this normal space, I live. I'm a very normal person. I don't jump out of uh, planes uh, with a wingsuit on. So actually, I think if I, wanna, if I wanna watch something, I wanna learn for my life, and my life is very normal. I actually think that extremes, focusing on extremes, is a waste of time. But very many film projects, also in documentary, are focusing on extremes. Okay, let's stay with this, uh, with the line for a, for a bit. So let's think, okay, this is the line of intelligence. Um, so on one side there's the Portozoa, so that it's basically a, a creature with just one cell. And pretty much on the other side of the line, there's the human. It's not at the end of the uh, uh, line, because I believe in the future, and I also believe in further development of intelligence. Is that intelligence? Okay. So on this line, there's also, uh, you could locate the dog, and you could locate the cat. And usually I get like, but it's, <laughs> we are coming close to lunch, so maybe everything, everyone is a bit tired. Usually people complain a lot because they, there are always people in the audience that think that cats are more intelligent than dogs. <laughs> but this is not what I wanted to go into. So let's have a closer look at the dog. <laughs> On one side you have a stupid dog and you have an intelligent dog. And the, the most stupid dog on one side and the most intelligent dog on the other side and all the other dogs in between. <laughs> What's interesting now for me as a documentary maker is that I can basically pick any of these dogs and examine the dog, talk to the dog, try, try to understand the dog and learn a lot about dogs. That's clear because they are all dogs. The same, interestingly, goes for humans. <laughs> and that's clear because they all use the same technology. They use the same hardware. Why we tell stories, chapter four. A friend, um, a friend told me that uh, his daughter listens to stories on her CD. Uh, she has a CD player and she has children's stories on it. And he was wondering, he said, like she's listening to, the, to these stories so many times, like so many times, the same story. It's really annoying because you can hear it all in, in the apartment, it's always the same. And I remember that I did the very same thing, uh, not CDs, at that time it was cassettes. So I listened to, ca to children's stories on my cassette recorder and I listened to it tens of times, maybe hundreds of times. And I also remember why I did that. The reason was that these stories held the key to the world in them for me. So I could learn how the world works, works work, I could learn how the world works by listening to these stories. So to learn how, what, what is good and what is bad and how I have to behave out there to get lunch. So stories are pills that are, that in a very, um, that contain complex rule sets. And we can 
even discuss these rule sets with other people by telling stories, even though we might not be aware of it. So what happened then, uh, when I was li lying on my belly in the sun, listening to the stories on the cassette recorder, is inside my brain the, the connections between the synapses grew, and these are the paths that I still use for thinking. Chapter five, we are coming close towards Q and A, and after that, lunch. <laughs> Why do we tell stories? We try, we tell stories because we want to make sense of the world. We do this by naming things and putting them in an order. To whom do we tell these stories? Well, we tell them to other people. But most, I think, foremost, we tell them to ourselves. In the past century, things were mostly told linearly. And the reason for that took me also many years to, to, uh, to, to think that. Why are stories so linear in our, our world? And I think it comes from film. Because film is stored on a reel. It's like one thing after the other. It has to be like that. And it's highly seducive and, and, and fascinating to watch moving images and sound. So film is, is very seducive for people. And it had to be stored on a reel. So that, that's why stories became much more linear than they were before. Film made us do that. But with computers uh, today, we can tell stories and we can think in more flexible ways. And with the internet, we can tell and we can listen. So we can learn from the audience. How? Edmund Carpenter is an anthropologist who, uh, like a friend, sent me this quote. So in 1970, he said, I recently came across the following rules of communication posted in a school of journalism. So a book for journalists, he found these rules. Know your audience and address yourself directly to it. Know what you want to say and say it clearly and fully. Reach the maximum audience by utilizing existing channels. I've just been at a workshop where, where pretty much that was, uh, was taught to documentary filmmakers. But what Carpenter said, whatever sense this may have made in the world of print, it makes no sense today. In fact, the reverse of each rules, rule applies. And I very much believe that. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Uh, if you want, you no, can I'm ask really the curious audience. If there are uh, questions from the audience or if everyone wants to go to lunch. Who is prepared for a question? <laughs> There's any? There's one question there. And maybe the last one. Do you need a mic there, please? Uh, for. And if you can just explain in 30 seconds what about Korsakov? comes from the syndrome very very briefly it was uh, it was a, a, a it was actually a, a bit of a joke uh, okay like I, it was a, like the first film the tool was made for a film on alcohol not on alcoholism but on alcohol and a friend of mine who is a doctor explained what the Korsakoff syndrome is and the Korsakoff syndrome is something that can happen to heavy alcohol abusers uh, can also have other uh, causes and this is basically a brain defect. So people cannot learn new things. What they, they get something into their short time memory, but they cannot, it will not be transported into their long time memory. So these people basically, they know what a car is because they have seen a car in the past. But if that had happened 20 years ago, they don't know what kind, like they, they are confronted with cars that they have never seen before. And what happens is, one of the sim symptoms of that syndrome is that these people become great storytellers because they contin continuously try to get the inside world with the outside world in sync by telling stories. And I think that we are all doing that. 
Some question? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, your presentation was fascinating. Uh, I just wanted to say, to disagree, if I may, just uh, traditional documentary, linear documentary films definitely uh, focus on extremes. I think the very style documentaries and personal documentaries nowadays much, focus very much on the normality and then find maybe the extremes there. But I mean, I just wanted to say that. But my question is, can you please reverse those three rules that you uh, uh, showed us at the end so that we can understand it a little better? I can, but uh, sorry, this is the, yeah. But um, I, I agree, like linear documentary very often goes into the field of normality. Uh, but what story, like if you want to sell your normal film on television, what they are going to tell you is, Whereas the story, and the story means extreme. So I guess this is, uh, uh, you are right, but you're wrong at the same time. <laughs> okay, uh, Florian will be here as well. So a lot of people, I, I, I think that wants to speak with you to chat about further. Um, let's give a big hand to Florian for being here today. <laughs> <laughs>